Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. haunted Norse have got to be pretty leery about opening closet doors. It seems bodies fall out of them. <laughs> Look like we're famous. Yes, it's quite good. Hey, listen to this. Every time the phone rings, something's bound to happen. What a nonsense. I don't remember anything starting with a phone ringing. Hello? Who's this? Well, this is me. Who did you think it was? Well, I didn't think it was me. Jerry there? Yes, he is. Uh, why? Don't fool around. Put him on. Who is it? Someone with a scratchy voice. It sounded as though he's been eating sand. Huh. Hello? Hello, Jerry? Yes? You got your knife, friend. This is Nick Magnus. Who? Don't who me, you punk. I gave you 48 hours to get out of town, and you're still here. Well, now, wait a minute. Shut your mouth. But you don't seem to understand. I... Shut up, I said. One more wait out of you, and I'll come up and cut out your... Now look, you tin horn. Nick Magnus means what he says. Get out of town quick. If I ever see you around Dave's cigar store again... Dave's cigar store? Yeah, I'll spray you full of lead. Now, wait a second. You've got the wrong guy. Huh? Ain't this Jerry Lawson? No, I'm Jerry North. Jerry, no. Hey, what number is this? Bramwell 34370. Holy mackerel. I made a wrong mistake. Oh, well, I'm glad you did. You know, you don't want to go around killing people, Nick. Hello? Hello? He hung up. Well, Jerry, this sounds serious. He sounds like a voice out of an old gangster movie. His name is Nick Magnus, and he's gunning for someone by the name of Jerry Lawson. He got this number by mistake. Well, then it's up to us to reach Jerry Lawson and warn him to stay away from Dave's cigar store. Yeah, now, now, just be calm, darling. Who's not calm? Quick, look up Jerry Lawson in the phone book. What do you think I'm doing? Oh, here it is, darling. Just one digit different from ours. I just hope it's the same Jerry Lawson. Well, dial the number. Don't waste time. I have dialed it. Numbers ringing. Quiet evening with the North. I'd like to know what we've done to deserve. Hello? It's a woman. Hello? Uh, is Jerry there, Jerry Lawson? Who wants him? Well, this is Jerry North. He doesn't know me, but I've got to talk to him. What about? Will you please stop wasting time? This is a matter of life and death. Jerry isn't here right now. Well, where is he? Nick Magnus is after him. Don't get excited, Miss. I know where Jerry went. Where? Dave's Cigar Store, 10th Avenue. Thanks. I've got to get to Dave's Cigar Store. Hello, operator. Operator, get me the police department. Lieutenant Bill Wigand, homicide squad. And hurry, there's about to be a murder. Now, you just relax, darling. I'll call you the minute Bill Wigand takes over. Nothing of the sort. I'm going with you. Oh, what are you talking about? You're out of your mind. No, no, not you. Look, uh, Lieutenant Bill Wigan, W-E-I-G-A-N-D. We're still in time. There's no crowd. What does that prove, Jerry? Lawson could be dead lying in the back room of the cellar. Remind me the first thing in the morning to have our phone taken out. Is Jerry Lawson here? Well, personally, I'd say we're alone, mister. There's you, me, and the young lady. We were told Jerry Lawson's here. Are you the proprietor? No, he's in the back. He'll be here in a minute. Are you the proprietor? Yeah, why? We're looking for Jerry Lawson. You a cop? No, we're here because Nick Magnus... I thought so. Will you run back and tell Nick Magnus that... What? 
Lawson! Stand back, you two. He's dead, all right. Got him right through the ticket. Look at the blood. Two bullet holes in the curtain. He was shot from the alley. Look, he's still breathing. Pam, phone Dr. Wells. Those bones are dead. Won't do any good to call a doctor anyway. If this guy ain't dead, he soon will be. Well, why don't you run back and tell Nick Magnus that somebody beat you to it? Well, now, wait a minute. You've got us all wrong. I'm Jerry North, the book publisher, and this is Mrs. North. Delighted, I'm sure. Pam, phone Dr. Wells and then call the police. The police? Who called the police? We did. Look, Jerry, he's all right. Explain things to him, Lawson. I'll go out and stall the cops. <laughs> Perfectly wonderful the way you're all right with that blood all over your chest. Red ink, lady. Uh, those holes in the curtain, a uh, termite? Uh, I made them with a pencil. Mm. I don't know why you staged such an act for us. When I heard the name Nick Magnus, I figured you was from him. Well, you knew he was gunning for you, huh? Sure I did. We're both on the same line. And according to Nick, I was moving in on his territory. Oh, my glory, I didn't know people had territories anymore. I thought that went out with prohibition. It did, in the liquor business. But I'm a bookmaker. So is my husband. He's a publisher. Pam, Mr. Lawson takes bets on horses. And that's why I don't want no excess conversation with no police. So goodbye for now. Don't want no excess conversation with no police. Such <laughs> English. Well, who's he fooling now? There's red ink this time. You mean he isn't fooling? No, he's dead. This is the real thing. Nobody there, and the back door was open. Wonder where that gun is. Well, I don't think someone would have shot him and then given him the gun as a souvenir. No, no, I mean the one he used for the fake shooting. Oh, it isn't here, Jerry. I've looked everywhere. Oh, shots. What happened? Just stumbled into the room and fell. Lawson. I love this guy. I love him just like a brother. Nick Magnus. I'll get him for this. Well, if you don't, the police will. Come on, Pam. Let's go outside and wait for Bill. The bulb went out. Now, let's try to make some sense out of this, Pam. I told you, Bill. The first shooting was a fake. Uh, the blood was red ink. The second shooting was real. Where were you when the real shooting took place? Out front telling Joe to stall you. Stall me? Why'd you want to stall me? I wanted to give a pal a break. You cops were after Lawson for bookmaking. He was my friend. And, and I... then you rushed back here after you heard the second group of shots? That's right. Did you see anyone in the hall? No, no one. The back door to the alley was wide open. Did you see anyone leave by the back door? No. Look, Lieutenant, why waste your time talking to me? The man you're after is Nick Magnus. Do you want to answer the questions here, or do you want to go down to headquarters? Quiet, everybody. Now, oh, what's the matter, Pam? Well, maybe you better keep talking, Bill. I swear there's somebody listening at the door. Nick Magnus, stand back, everybody. He'll be armed. Keep talking, Bill. Okay, folks. Looks like an open and shut case as far as I can see, and I see no reason to keep you here any longer. Oh. Oh. Ah. Who do you happen to be? Janet. What are you doing here? You know this eavesdropper? Sure, she's my wife. Why were you listening at the door, Mrs. Ferber? Well, I saw the police car outside, and I thought my husband might be in some sort of trouble. Lawson's been murdered, honey. Watch what you say. Jerry, murder? Now, supposing you keep quiet, Mr. Ferber, I'll give her all the information I think she needs to know. Dummy up, dear. They'll try to pin it on you. Quiet. Nick Magnus. Nick Magnus must have done it. What makes you think so, Mrs. Ferber? Look, I, I, I feel a little bit shaky. Do you mind if I sit down? No, not at all. Please. I know Nick Magnus did it, officer. How do you know? Because Magnus was after him. About an hour ago, Jerry got a phone call to warn him. That was me. How'd you know somebody called Lawson to warn him? The landlady told me. That's who you talked to, the landlady. What were you doing in Lawson's apartment? I didn't say I was in his apartment. I was by his apartment house. My wife goes by Lawson's apartment house to place bets. 
What's wrong with that? Okay. Now let's get down to business. Where's the gun that Lawson used for the fake shooting? Must be around here someplace. It isn't. We've searched the place with a fine tooth comb. I thought you said the phones were dead, Mr. Ferber. They are for outgoing calls. You can still call in on some of them. I'll get it. Hold it. Hello? Oh, Nick. Yeah? You're just the guy I wanted to see. Now listen, the cops are... Drop dead small fry. Where's Jerry Lawson? Nick, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Jerry, but... Don't try to stall me, punk, or you'll find yourself in a barrel of cement. But, Nick, the cops... What do I care about the cops? Oh, uh, Nick, shut up before I feed you a lead breakfast. I'm here to get that rat Lawson. Don't open your mouth. That was Mabel, the cashier at O'Brien's all-night restaurant. Lawson gave her six losers in a row. Lieutenant, can she go home? She hasn't been well. I don't like to see her upset this way. Nobody goes home but the Norths. All right, Lawson. You asked for it. Nick Magnus! Come on in, Nick, and join the party. I'm Lieutenant Wagon from Homicide. Hom homicide? <laughs> in the car. I don't want to get in the car. Stop dragging me. Jerry Lawson is dead, and you heard what Wigan said. He wants no help. Now, don't worry. They'll get Nick Magnus. I tell you, I don't want to. Get into that car. You're going to stop this car at the next corner, do you hear? I don't know about you, but I'm going back. Over my dead body. Maybe you got something there, wise guy. I don't like guys who take dolls for a ride. Who are you? The name is Magnus. Nick Magnus. I seen you rough house the little filly into this jalopy. What are you talking about? So you're Jerry North, eh? The guy I gabbed with on the phone. What's your name, sister? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, you know me, Nick. Chicago Kate's my moniker in the mob. Not the Chicago Kate who rubbed out Lefty the Gimp in Philly last year. I didn't spill it to the cops. Why should I to you? Hey, let's take this punk and dump him in the river, huh? You got something there, baby. Yeah, you're cute, baby. But you ain't fooling me none. Chicago Kate's dead. I personally sent her a floral horseshoe to the grave. Oh, buried the wrong game, huh? Ah, uh, I get it now. You must be Mrs. North. Jerry, we must have a radio with a speaker in the back. Sister, you can take it from me. It ain't no radio. Keep on driving, mister. I gets nervous in cars. And when I gets nervous, my hand shakes. And if my hand shakes, this gun might go off. I wouldn't want that to happen, because you're going to be a big help. Very interesting. In what way? Just about the time Jerry Lawson was being bumped off, I was walking through the park. And nobody seen me. Not even a squirrel. What do you want us to do, be a couple of squirrels? I wish you could be, Wren. But the way I figure, you was at the cigar store when the murder happened, so you can't say you was with me. What can we do? You can keep your mouth shut about that phone call. Understand? Oh, you mean they might think you killed Jerry Lawson? Yeah. You catch on fast. And you didn't, of course. I can't afford to kill nobody. I'm still on parole. I want no cheap tricks, see? This is a gun I got back here. Stop the car. I said stop the car. Stop nothing. I'm taking you to the police station. Yeah? Jerry, he has a gun in the back of my neck and it's cold. Okay, don't shoot. I'll stop. That's better. You nearly lost the wife. All right. You can stop here. Get out. 
Get out. You heard me. Come on. You too, Chicago, Kate. Yes, sir. Well, now what? Start walking. But we've got to get home. You heard me. Start walking. And don't say nothing about that phone call. Or you'll never walk again. Chicago Kate. We'll get right back. Keep coming, honey. Destination home, Jerry? Destination Dave's cigar store. Come on. to the scene of his crime. Golly, what do we do now? Well, we go in and catch him. Any idea who it is? I know who it is. Look, they're looking for something. Well, tell me, Jerry, tell me who. Why should I? You never tell me. Here, Dave's cigar store. This must be the back door. How do we get in? Now, if we try the back way, you'll hear us and get out the window or the front door. So we'll pick the lock on the front door and then sneak down the hallway. Come on. So you said he. Okay, Mrs. Ferber. Let's save a lot of time. You were the woman I spoke to when I phoned Jerry Lawson's apartment tonight, right? Look, I, I'll tell you everything. If you'll only help me. Well, go ahead, Mrs. Ferber. If you're innocent of the murder of Jerry Lawson, we'll help you. I promise you. I didn't kill Jerry. I swear I didn't. What are you hiding behind your back, Mrs. Ferber? This is what I really came after. It's Jerry's diary and bet book. I owe Jerry thousands. If my husband ever saw it, he'd leave me. Now, please, let me go and take... Well, if it isn't George Raft right out of Scarface. Listen, sister, I was flipping half dollars before George Raft had a quarter. All right, hand over that little book, sweetie. Oh, no, Nick, please. Come on, hand it over quick. I got a gun in my pocket. You'd better give it to him, Mrs. Ferber. That's the idea. Now stay where you are, all of you. Nick, you're just making yourself look guiltier than ever. Looking guilty don't count. But what interest could you have in Lawson's bet book? She said it was a dairy too, didn't she? If he wrote something about me wanting to kill him, I'd get the chair for sure. But you're destroying evidence, Nick. It'll be just one more count against you. Listen, brother, I'm in this up to my neck now. If the dead man wrote that I wanted to kill him, what chance would I have? Now I'm getting out of here. Stay right where you are and don't no one try to follow me. Right, Mr. North. You! Janice. Mr. North, please give me that book. What are you doing here, honey? I thought you were going to your mother's. Oh, darling, I'm so ashamed. I'll tell you everything. That's all right, darling. Your husband will stand back of you. Don't worry about a thing. Well, this is a nice homey little gathering. Look, Bill. <laughs> Lawson's diary and bet book. Oh, no. That book's a dummy, Jerry. I left it here as bait. 
The real one's in my office. What? Well, hello, Nick. Where have you been keeping yourself? That book you say you got, has it got anything in it against me? On every other page. Mm -hmm. Now, just everybody relax and we'll wrap this case up. I have several men waiting outside, so let's all take it nice and easy. Hmm? Now, all we need is the murder weapon, and we want it as of now. I ain't owned a gun since I was a little kid so high. It was on my seventh birthday. My poor old mother gave it to me for a present. I... She should have used it on you. Honest, Lieutenant, I'm giving it to you straight. No gun magnus, they call me in the mob. The way I figure it, one good attorney is worth a thousand rods. <laughs> What's the matter with you guys? I'm hot. I'll say you are. Now listen, Magnus, you're on your way to a little room up the river. And they're going to strap you in a chair. And you're going to watch the lights grow dim while they send 200,000 volts of juice through your body. Lights. Huh? Uh, Jerry, turn out the lights. Sam, what are you doing? Hey, what's going on? Quiet, quiet, everybody. Bill, look at the light. Don't anybody move. Sarge, turn on the lights. This gun was used four times. Okay, Nick. Tell them the truth. What do you mean? That you made me stash that gun up in that lamp. I made you. I never seen that gun in my life before. Bill, you say that gun was used four times? Jerry Lawson was just shot twice. Well, wasn't that enough? He's dead, isn't he? Don't you see, Bill? There were four shots fired tonight. Two by Jerry Lawson when he was just pretending. Two by the killer when he really meant business. Mr. Ferber was the first one to get to Jerry Lawson when he was lying here after the fake shooting. He hid the gun when we weren't looking. You're crazy. That's what they all say. You were the only one to have the gun from the time of the fake murder until the real one was committed. Excuse me a minute, Bill. <coughs> Mrs. Ferber, you were in Jerry Lawson's apartment tonight. This is his handkerchief, and it's your lipstick. Color matches perfectly. Classic carmine, it smells like to me. You lied about being there to protect someone in this room. Who? Don't pay any attention to her, Lieutenant. She's as wacky. You think we can't remember? Just before Lieutenant Wigand arrived here tonight, didn't you climb on that chair and do something with the light? The bulb was out. Isn't that what you said? Sure, sure. But I also said that Nick Magnus forced you me to. You hid that gun before Nick Magnus arrived. I think she'll tell you about it now, Bill. My apologies, Pam. Sergeant, take it down to the car. You're gonna let them get away with this. What can I do? This dame's got me dizzy. Let go of me. Tell them everything, now. Don't worry, dear. We've all said too much. I'll get you an attorney. Oh, you'll get me an attorney. You're gonna stick by me, huh? You'd let me rot in a cage before you'd get me an attorney. You wouldn't get your own mother an attorney. All right, Lieutenant. I was in Jerry Lawson's apartment tonight, but only to warn him against my husband. Lieutenant? I saw her running out the back door two minutes after. running out. You killed Jerry. You killed him because you knew I'd fallen for him. You dirty little two-timer. Don't you call me names, you big ape. Jerry was a good guy. You've been a rat ever since the day you were born. Check the serial numbers on that gun, Lieutenant. You'll find it doesn't belong to Nick Magnus. It belongs to my husband. Well, wasn't it nice of Nick Magnus to leave our car here? Well, he's the thoughtful type. No, I gotta hand it to you, Pam. Once again, I won't... Thank me, Bill. You and Jerry deserve the credit. Well, personally, <laughs> I'd rather have a good night's sleep. Yeah, me too. See you later, kid. Good night, Bill. Good, good night. night. Good night. Be careful. Don't forget dinner next Tuesday night. Right. There's one thing about this case I still don't understand. Oh, please, Pam, I'm tired. I know, but what Nick Magnus said about never owning a gun. You know as well as I do that right here in this car tonight, he stuck a pistol in the back of my neck. Oh, Jerry, he's at it again. What did I tell you? No gun Magnus. Here's my rod. Queen Soda Pop, it says here. Blended to tempt the taste of a king. <laughs> <laughs> you had six of them back here in this little carton. <laughs> now you can drive me home. Okay, no gun, Magnus. Name your precinct. Huh? I mean your street. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. I'll tell you when to toy. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. 
a John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales.